today I'll be discussing about chapter 5, which is about the integumentary system. The integumentary system is consists of the skin and accessory structures like your hair, glands, and the nails. Integument means covering. The basic two layers of the integumentary system or your skin would be your epidermis and your dermis and below it would be your hypodermis or the subcutaneous tissue wherein you will be able to see there the fat deposits. Other structures that can be found in your skin would be your hairs, the sebaceous glands, erector pili muscle, you have your hair follicle, the nerves, the veins and the arteries and of course your sweat glands. The appearance of the integumentary system can indicate physiological imbalances in your body. For the functions of the integumentary system, first, you have protection. The skin provides protection against abrasion and ultraviolet light. It also prevents water loss and, of course, the introduction of microbes within your system. Next, you have sensation. This is when the integumentary system has the sensory receptors that can detect heat, cold, pressure, touch, and pain. Next, you have temperature regulation. The amount of blood flow beneath the skin surface and the activity of sweat glands in the skin both help regulate body temperature and helps maintain your homeostasis. Next is pore secretion. Small amounts of waste products are lost through the skin and in gland secretions and it's very important when removing the waste from your body. And lastly, the vitamin D production. When exposed to the ultraviolet light, the skin produces a molecule that can be transformed into vitamin D. Did you know that there are so many facts about your integumentary system? Apart from being the largest organ that plays a vital role in detecting hot and cold and regulating temperature in your body, the average person's skin covers an area of 2 square meters. The skin accounts for about 15% of your body weight. The average adult has approximately 21 square feet of skin which weighs 9 pounds and contains more than 11 miles of blood vessels. The average person has about 300 million skin cells. A single square inch of skin has about 19 million cells and up to 300 sweat glands. Your skin is the thickest on your feet at 1.4 millimeters and thinnest in your eyelids about 0.2 millimeters. Your skin constantly sheds cells about 30,000 to 40,000 cells every minute. That's nearly 9 pounds per year. The skin renews itself every 28 days. And some sources estimate that more than half of the dust in your home is actually your dead skin. Dead skin comprises about a billion tons of dust in the Earth's atmosphere. Your skin is home to more than 1,000 species of bacteria. And the skin that is severely damaged may try to heal itself by forming scar tissue, which is different from the normal skin tissue because it lacks hair and sweat glands. The skin is made up of two major tissue layers. The first one is your epidermis, which is the most superficial layer of the skin. It is a layer of epithelial tissue that rests on the dermis. The next layer is your dermis, which is a layer of dense connective tissue that rest on a subcutaneous tissue which is not part of the skin. The epidermis. The epidermis is the first major skin region found outside of your body. It is composed of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and it prevents water loss and resist abrasion. The epidermis is composed of distinct layers we call strata. The cells of the deepest strata perform mitosis and it ignites the process of what we call the keratinization, where in which new cells with keratin push old cells to the surface where they slow or flake off. It may take around 40 to 56 days for the new cells to reach the surface, and the major cell types are what we call the keratinocytes. These are the major cell type of the epidermis and are also found in the oral mucosa. They perform the primary productive barrier between the internal milieu and the external environment. They produce high amounts of the protein keratin, a fibrous protein that composes the protective barrier of the skin and is also found in the hair and the nails. Strata of the epidermis. 
first layer would be the stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer of the epidermis. It has 20 to 30 layers of dead squamous cells filled with keratin and accounts for 75% of the epidermal thickness. Excessive slowing of the stratum corneum cells from the surface of the scalp is what we call dandruff. In the skin subjected to friction, the number of layers in the stratum corneum greatly increases producing a thickened area what we call now the callus or callo in Tagalog. Over a bony prominence, the stratum corneum can thicken to form a cone-shaped structure called a corn. The next layer of the epidermis would be the stratum lucidum. This is the skin found in the palms and soles. It is known as a thick skin because it has five epidermal layers instead of four. So basically, the presence of stratum lucidum would actually help you determine whether the skin is thick or thin. So when you see a skin that is thick, it just means that there's a stratum lucidum found in the layers of the skin. Next, we have stratum granulosum. It is where keratinocytes lose their nuclei and their cytoplasms appear to be granular. The next layer of the epidermis is your stratum spinosum, also known as the malphigian or prickle layer. The keratinocytes become connected through desmosomes and start to produce lamellar bodies from within the Golgi enriched in polar lipids, glycosphingolipids, free steroids, phospholipids, and catabolic enzymes. In this layer, you will also find the longer hand cells, which are immunologically active cells and are located in the middle of the spinosum layer. So these longer hand cells actually are um, performing their function when it comes to the defense in the skin. Next, we have the stratum basale, which is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It is single layered and is firmly attached to the dermis. So there are actually different types of immigrant cells in the skin. The first one would be your melanocyte. This is formed from the differentiation of your melanoblast and found in the deepest layer of the epidermis that produces your melanin. This is a pigment that protects the body from the UV radiation. Again, your Langerhans cells is an immune cell that engulfs foreign particles and pathogens when the skin is damaged. These are not readily distinguishable from ordinary epidermal cells, but they contain distinctive cytoplasmic granules and are readily identified histochemically by other high membrane-bound ATPAs or by certain surface antigens. There are different receptors in your skin. The first type of sensory receptor is your Meissner's corpuscle, which is for a sensation of fine discriminative touch and vibration. It is located in your dermal populae and epidermis. Next, you have a merkel ranber corpuscle for light touch. It is found in your dermal populae and epidermis. Next is a Pacinian corpuscle for pressure. It is found in your deep dermis or subcutaneous tissue. The cross corpuscle for a cold sensation found in the dermis. Your Ruffini's corpuscle for a heat sensation found in your dermis and subcutaneous tissues, and of course, the free nerve ending for pain, which is found in your papillary dermis or the basal layer. So this image that you see on your screen right now shows you the different um, tactile receptors in your skin and how are they laid out in the layers of your skin. So please make sure to be familiar on how they look like and how you can be able to differentiate them from one another. The next layer would be the dermis. This is the second major skin region. It is um, composed of your dense connective tissue. It contains collagen and elastic fibers. They contain fibroblasts, nerve endings, smooth muscle, glands, blood vessels, and hair follicles. Cleavage lines or tension lines in the skin are more resistant to stretch. It is due to the orientation of collagen fibers and it is important in scarring. If an incision is made parallel to the cleavage lines or along the direction um, of the cleavage lines, the result 
of the incision is less gapping, it has faster rate of healing, and less scar tissue can be produced after it. But if an incision is made across the cleavage line, it can gap, it needs an increased time needed for healing, and the result can be increased in scar tissue formation. Okay, so again, kapag ka ang incision or ang hiwa is along the direction or katulad ng direction ng cleavage lines, mas madali itong nag-heal. Compared kapag kahinahate or nahate ang isang cleavage line or multiple cleavage lines, dahil sa stretch, okay, nag nawawala ng capability si skin na mag-heal and mag-patch. So, usually, mas matagal siyang gumagaling. Okay? And if the skin is overstretched for any reason, the dermis can be damaged and it can also leave stretch marks. The layers of the epidermis includes first the papillary layer. This is thin connective tissue layer that contains our blood vessels. Next, you have your dermal papillae, which are projections that extend up into the dermis. They remove waste and help regulate body temperature. It is rich on hands and feet for fingerprints, and the pattern is usually genetically determined. Lastly, you have the reticular layer. It is the deepest layer of the dermis and accounts for 80% of the dermis. In these images, you will see here the different layers of the skin from the epidermis going to the dermis part. So, in the epidermis, under it is already the rich part, which is the dermal papilla. And again, they are very useful when it comes to the formation of your fingerprints and your footprints. Okay? So, even though if these fingerprints and footprints are genetically derived or namamana, what is unique about it is that walang tao ang the same ang fingerprint at footprints. So, magkakaiba yung conformation ng mga dermal papila and the, na nagpo-produce ng mga fingerprints and footprints or the ridges na tinatawag. Kaya nga ginagamit yung fingerprints and footprints usually when it comes to identifying a person, lalo na sa mga crime investigations kasi there are already different ways on how to identify people and even in uh, our local government, for example, kukuha ka ng ID o kaya magboboto ka, usually, ang gusto nila or ang ginagawa nilang protocol is for voters to stamp in their um, fingerprint just to make sure that valid, no? Yung, kung sino man yung nag-vote na yun, siya yung tao na yun na madetermine. O kaya naman, kapag sa mga crime scenes, yung mga nakukuha nila ng mga fingerprints, they can match them to a database na meron sila to determine who is actually the killer or sino yung mga involved sa isang crime scene. Okay? So, doon, pinaka-importante yung mga dermal papila. And then, here, makikita nyo yung la different layers. You have the epidermis, the papillary layer of the dermis, and of course, the reticular layer of the dermis. And then again, the difference of your, um, of your thick skin and your thin skin would be the presence of the stratum lucidum. So, if there is a stratum lucidum, of course, that is already consider considered as thick skin, but if... Um, the layer of the skin is just four layers, corneum, granulosum, spinosum, and basale. That's already um, expected as a thin uh, skin type. So next is your hypodermis. This is found below the dermis. It is the foundation of the skin. It attaches skin to the underlying muscle and bone. It contains loose and adipose tissue. It contains half of the body's fat and the body fat for females is around 20 to 23% and males is around 13 to 25%. But then again, this hypodermis is really not considered as part or as a layer of your skin. The skin color and variations. So the skin color and variations of the skin are determined by the following. You have pigments, genetics, blood circulation, thickness of stratum corneum. So, the melanocytes of darker skinned people produce more darker melanin than fairer skinned people. So, but basically, all races have the same number of melanocytes. So, any one, any race, 
any um, people of age, may, may it be of gender, the number of melanocytes are the same. The only difference is that the amount or the quality of the melanin being produced by the melanocytes. So the darker the melanin is, of course, the darker your complexion is. But if there's a, um, kumbaga, mas light or mas fewer yung color of the melanin, of course, more fair skinned or more white the skin will be. For the skin pigments, you have first melanin. So again, it is being produced by the melanocytes. It ranges from yellow to reddish brown to black. It is responsible for the hair and eye color. It provides protection against the UV light. The amount of pr produce determined by the genetics, UV light, and hormones. Freckles are accumulation of melanin. And albinism is the absence of melanin, which is a congenital disorder. So more likely, guys, when a person has um, so much melanin on the skin, they are more protected from the UV light compared to the white people. Okay? So mas, ma mas madalas na nakakuha talaga ng sakit ang mga white people because um, mas prone sila sa UV light okay? compared to those who have darker and more melanin in the skin. And then, yung tinatawag nating freckles, some actually um, see it as cute for other people na may binabagay yung mga freckles. But it is actually an, um, considered to be an abnormality because of it, is a, it, it is an accumulation of the melanin in the skin. Okay? And then, albinism, this is the absence of melanin and it is a congenital disorder. So, ibig sabihin, um, baby pa lang meron na silang abnormality when it comes to the development or the production of melanin in the skin. So, up until babies are born, um, ganun na talaga sila ever since. Okay? So, an example of what we call the albinism, if you have been watching Jessica Soho for a long time and you've been uh, seeing their featured stories, is what um, this image is uh, reflected on your screen, of course, the Ogis. Okay, so these are actually people from Mindanao. Uh, meron silang apat na anak, no? They are from a tribe. One of them is normal, which is Bulawan, but the, their other children, Puti, by Puti, and by Dido, are all albino. Okay? So the downside of being an albino is that um, if you have watched no, yung pinaka-particular na coverage na to, they cannot be um, under the sunlight for too long kasi masyadong uh, nasisilaw sila. Okay, nakakasilaw, masakit sa balat. And then, um, of course, they will not be protected for the UV light, right? So, uh, at saka ang naging problem kasi dito is of course naging tampulan sila ng tukso because they are um, looked at as abnormal. Okay? But if uh, you trace also the uh, background of the parents, both are actually normal. They are fair skin, they are Filipino in race. But then, yun nga, uh, usually kasi nangyayari talaga yung mga ganito when it comes to uh, genetics. No? Nagkakaroon ng uh, problema with the chromosomes and of course the DNA that, that are being passed to their children kaya nagkakaroon ng mga ganitong klaseng cases. Okay? So if you would like to watch and to know more about albinism I think this is um, this segment of Jessica Soho is actually one of um, the most informative um, coverages that you can watch to learn more about what albinism is. Okay? So, this one is the melanin transfer to the epithelial cells. So, the first one here, you have the melanosomes, which are produced by the Golgi apparatus of the melanocytes. And then, the melanosomes move into the melanocyte cell processes. And then, the epithelial cells phagocytize the tips of the melanocyte cell processes. And then, the melanosomes, which were produced inside the melanocytes, have been transferred to the epithelial cells and are now inside them. So, of course, kapag na-transfer na yun, of course, yung pagpaproduce ng melanin will already be happening after it. Okay? 
Other skin pigments include carotene. So it is yellow to orange pigment found in plants. It accumulates the stratum corneum. So usually kapag ka medyo yellow orange, ito yung medyo may problema, no? Sabi nga natin kanina na your skin color can actually depict abnormalities in your body. So kapag ka medyo carotene yung uh, madilaw-dilaw or orange orange yung kulay ng balat, minsan sinasabi natin na may hepa. Okay? It is actually a um a kumbaga factor or a description for uh, a person who is suffering from hepatitis. Okay, so ganun din ka-importante yung mga skin pigments na to. And then, of course, you also have your hemoglobin which gives the pinkish red color found in the red blood cells. So, in tanning and sunburn, so ito, na, halos lahat naman siguro mahilig mag-tan and magpa-sunburn during summers. So, the exposure to the UV light stimulates melanocytes to increase the production of melanin. So, the more you're exposed to the sunlight, of course, it, your melanocytes are stimulated to produce mel melanin. Kaya nagkakaroon ng, nagkakaroon ng darker skin or nagkakaroon tayo ng sunburn kapag nasasobrahan. Okay? So, when the melanin builds up to, the, to help the, uh, protect the skin against UV radiation or tan, Okay. A sunburn is the skin's reacting to a to an exposure. And then the UV light causes elastic fibers to clump and become leathery. The UV light can alter DNA in cells, causing them to mutate or cancer. So this is also one of the reasons why hindi natin masyadong tinotolerate na laging nag, nagpapaaraw or yung nagpapatutong or nagpapasunburn because it can alter your uh, the DNA of your skin cells and of course they can um, eventually generate or mutate into a cancerous type of cell. Okay? So instead of you um, producing normal skin cells, yun pala, hindi mo alam, nagmumutate na yung type of skin cell na yun and then eventually it can already produce cancer or cause cancer in your body. Okay. So, next is um, the skin color and the diseases related to them. So, for redness, uh, usually we denote it as fever, hypertension, inflammation, and for allergies, palor, ito yung namumutla. Of course, if a person is anemic or has low blood pressure, Pag jaundice, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, pwede may hepa, like the liver disorder. And then for bronzing, this is the Addison's disease. Um, it is for it is a kidney disease. And then for bruising, uh, ito yung namamasa, yung may pasapasa, kunwari nabubunggo, o kaya pag kinurot ng matagal or napalo, okay? So, it denotes yung broken blood vessels. So, kapag ka-bruising, minsan may levels pa yan, minsan green, na may pagka-yellow, hanggang sa nag-violet, hanggang nag-purple. Okay? So, next we have your hair components. So, the hair or the shaft is the flexible strand of the keratinized cell. Usually, it's found above the skin surface or yung mga balahibo. Okay, buhok. And then you have the root which is below your uh, skin or within the scalp. And then the hair bulb or the base of the root and where hair is produced. And then the hair fo follicle which is the group of cells that surround root and bulb and gives hair different shapes. Okay. So this is how hair is being produced. So, hair is produced in your hair bulb, and then the hair bulb rests on blood vessels to supply it with nutrients. So, the hair grows longer as cells are added to the base of the hair bulb, and the hair production happens in different phases, including the growth phase or the anagen phase, the cessation or the catagen phase, and of course, the rest or the telogen phases. So, the stem cells are responsible for hair production and the shape of the hair. Follicle has an effect on the hair shape and texture of the person's hair. Okay? So, lahat na, usually talaga guys, ang hair, kapag, uh, kunyari, natanggal, they also undergo resting phases before siya humaba ng humaba. Pero, ayaw din naman natin yung talagang resting phase na talaga na wala ng tutubo. Okay? Pero, they also 
rest in between the growth phases. Kaya nga minsan, di ba guys, merong mga tao na kunyari, ang haba ng buhok, nagpagupit, tapos ang tagal na nilang tumubo ulit. Okay? May mga ganon na humihinto yung pagtubo ng uh, hair nila and then eventually tutuloy ulit. Okay? So guys, iba din naman kapag may underlying um, may underlying na sakit like the alopecia. Okay? If you're familiar with alopecia, alopecia is yung uh, nagbabald talaga yung hair nila, nag-uumpisa sa parang poknat, and then eventually the hair will be um, shaving off. Okay? So, that is uh, genetic as well. Uh, kumbaga, uh, naipapasa, namamana. And then, wala siyang cure as of now. The only thing that um, uh, na meron is the prevention part or the, uh, parang semi-treatment. And then, meron din siyang mga iba't ibang levels depending on what type of alopecia you have. Kasi merong mga tao na um, nagpapatsay yung buhok pero meron pa rin siyang buhok pero meron din talaga na walang buhok na talaga. And then, hindi na sila tinutubuan. Okay? If you have or if uh, you have watched one of the segments in Itbulaga which is about um, alopecia patients, no, you, you will actually know their, um, how alopecia is being treated and how alopecia patients can still thrive in life even if meron silang ganong klaseng um, sakit. Uh, it is actually on the segment of bowel judgmental. If um, kung mapapanood your or, or if you can um, find um, a link or if I can find a link, maybe I can share to you para may marami pa kayong matutunan about alopecia. Okay? So, more hair facts. So, testosterone and good nutrition promote hair growth. Uh, growth occurs in cycles like the active and resting stages, as, as what I've explained. And then, the scalp hair grows for three years and rests for a year. Okay, so ito yung nagre-rest din sila. So, eyelashes grow for 30 days and rest for 105 days. And we lose about 90 scalp hairs per day. So, imagine if you don't also lose your hair. Kung walang natatanggal na buhok sa ulo natin, edi sobrang-sobrang dami ng buhok meron tayo. Okay. So, gray hair is the loss of fading of the melanin. So, it comes along with aging. Okay, kasi nga, diba, as we age, the quality of cells also um, reduce. Okay, Nag, kumbaga, nawawala din yung capability of the cells to produce what they can produce normally. Okay, and then male pattern baldness is from the loss of the hair follicle. Okay, usually talaga ang may mga pattern baldness ay mga lalaki. Okay. So, sabi nga dun sa napanood ko sa Itbulaga, when you actually experience things like the loss of hair, tulad yun, uh, kasi ngayon nauso na yung mga pagpapakulay ng buhok, pagpapableach, pag, uh, pagpapakulot, pagpapaperm, pagpapastrate, di ba? It actually damages the hair proteins, no? Uh, and kapag ka sobrang na-damage na yung hair, especially the roots, uh, and then nag-fall off na, siguro maybe we can stop those um, types of activities for the hair, no? Kasi ayaw naman natin pagsisihan sa huli na makakalbo na lang kayo and then masisira na yung buhok nyo ng tuluyan. Again, as we age, of course, the quality of the cells of our body also depreciates. So, paano kung dumating yung time na bata ka pa pero sobrang sunog na sunog na yung buhok mo sa kakapagawa or kakapapakulay and then pagtanda mo, pagsisihan mo na frizzy yung hair mo na kul kulot na kulot instead of ano, instead of derecho pa siya. Tapos yung uh, melanin color, di ba? Ay, batang bata ka pa eh, grayish to white na talaga yung color ng hair mo. Of, cor of course, what we can actually do sa mga ganong situation is go back to the natural methods, okay? Or go back to natural products like the use of coconut oil, uh, use of aloe vera, okay? So, yun yung natutunan ko dun sa segment na yun na let's go back to the, kumbaga, organics, 
or yung mga natural types of um, products na ginagamit talaga for hair to take care of our hair. Okay? Kasi ngayon marami nang lumalabas na different types of shampoo, they have parabens, they have, kumbaga marami ng chemicals involved which actually uh, instead of talagang pinapaganda yung buhok, eh, pumapangit talaga. Okay? Not all people can actually live like actresses or actors wherein meron silang insurance for their hair. No? Kung nakikita natin sila sa mga uh, palabas or mga patalastas sa TV na ang ganda ng buhok nila, we don't know in real life. No? Na baka puro gamot na lang sila or baka naman kasi nagpa-hair implant na sila. If you're also aware of hair implanting, it's very expensive as well. Pero ginagamit siya ng mga rich people talaga. Because they are trying to um kumbaga, build in or stick in new hair follicles para mag-grow ulit yung hair. Okay? So, since not all people could actually afford um, those types of procedure, all we can do is actually go back to the natural and basics. And let let's just, ano, parang leave alone your hair, no? Huwag natin siyang masyadong abusuhin. Because, Uh, kapag yan ang nawala, isa yan sa mga parts of the body natin na hindi na natin pwedeng ibalik in the future. Okay? So, next for the hair muscle. So, you have your erector pili muscle. It is actually a, a type of smooth muscle that surrounds each hair follicle. So, it contracts and the hair stands on, on the other end and it produces your goosebumps. So, ayan, um, nararanasan natin yan, lalo na kapag ka may change of weather, ba? Diba? Kapag ka medyo malamig, kapag ka naman, nafe-feel natin na we have to go to the CR, like na or na, meron tayong mga ganyang um, situations na nahuuna na yung pagtayo ng buhok or goosebumps. Pwede rin na kapag out of fright. Kumbaga, um, mga activities na nagpapataas ng blood pressure or nagbibigay sa iyo ng fright, okay? So, yan yung nagiging response ng skin natin. Okay? Nagkakaroon tayo ng goosebumps. So, next, you have the glands of the skin. So, first, you have your sebaceous glands. It is connected to the hair follicle. It has the capability of producing what we call your sebum, which is an oily substance that lubricates the hair. And um, it actually is being used to prevent your hair from drying as well. Okay? Kaya nga meron yung di ba, mga oily skin or oily yung scalp. Okay? That's okay. And then you have your eccrine sweat glands. This is found all over your body and it opens to the sweat pores. Um, it secretes your water and salt secretions like sa sweat. Okay? And then you have also your apocrine sweat glands. They open into the hair follicle. Um, they are found only in your armpits and your genitalia. They secrete thick and rich secretions. And they become active during puberty and could also cause body odor. Okay. So, yung mga body odor naman, guys, it's not literally because of the upper clean sweat glands or um, the hair. Okay. What actually causes your body odor are the introduction of bacteria. Okay. Sila yung nagpapa, nagbibigay ng unpleasant smell. Okay. Kaya kailangan kapag ka nagpapawis or ano, or we, nag, uh, when you undergo the process of puberty years, Eh, syempre nagbabago yung parts of the body. Of course, what we need to do is to take care of them. Okay? So, you may want to use the traditional ways, no? Lalo na kapag ka sa kilikili, which is what they call the tawas. Kailan lang? Kasi meron din mga akong mga kakilalang people na hindi naman din sila hiyang when it comes to the use of deodorants, no? And then... Uh, meron din tayong mga tinatawag ng mga taong mga baskilin, ba? Diba? Yung mga talagang nagwe-wet yung kilikili nila, especially when they do extreme activities or masyadong mainit. Pero meron din namang mga taong hindi, ba? Diba? Even if they are in the same um, environment. Okay? So, yung mga ganong type ng mga tao, usually marami lang din talaga silang uh, sweat glands uh, sa armpits nila, kaya baskilin sila. Okay? Or mas active yung pagproproduce nila ng um, secretions. 
Okay? And then, yun nga, um, sa genitals din naman, so, the ways of you taking care of your genitalia is, of course, just by washing uh, washing them, of course, with um, kumbaga, less acidic types of soap, yung mga milder types of soap, and water alone. Okay? So, dati, kasi nagkaroon na tayo ng, or lumabas na yung mga ginagamit na mga feminine wash. Actually, um, in microbiology, no, what is uh, being kumbaga ang pinupush na proper way of keeping your genit genital skin are just the use of mild soap and water. Okay. So, uh, I would also like to um, clear na kapag uh, sa babae, no, sabi nila meron, may mga times na the genitals are odorous, okay? That's normal, okay? Guys, wag nating anuhin ng mga babae na bakit may times na, especially if you have, if you, if you have partners or kung um, magkakaroon kayo ng asawa in the future na bakit may times na ganun, of course, um, it is actually a defense mechanism of the, uh, a of, of a female's body when it comes to defense Okay? Especially for bacteria. Okay? Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi naguhugas yung partner. No? Okay? So, tanggalin natin yung notion na ganun. Okay? Nakadiri. Na bakit ganun? Bakit ganyan? Okay? The, the, a female's body actually does um, different things in order for it to be protected. Okay? Kasi minsan daw bakit kahit naguhugas na ganun pa rin. Okay? It's because also Women also produce secretions, no? Katulad ng men, okay? Lalo na sa babae prior to um, ovulation or prior to having menstruation, may mga secretions din yan, okay? So tanggalin natin yung maling notion, okay? About having um, odorous genitals, lalo na sa mga babae, okay? There's always a reason kung bakit may ganong uh, may ganong um, mga examples okay but then again girls don't forget that meron din tayo na kailangan din na aalagaan niyo yung geni genitals okay na hindi porket sinabi ni ay sinabi ni ma'am na normal lang yon o wala nang maghuhugas ganon okay so hindi ganon so dapat um every day you just wash with um mild soap and then water that's it okay uh, it's it's uh, the sometimes the odors are just normal okay and then next we have your nails so what are they they are thin plates with layers of dead stratum corneum cells and with hard keratin okay so the nail structures it has uh, first your nail body which is the visual part and then you have your nail root which is covered by the skin yun yung nasa ilalim okay and then you have your cuticle which is the stratum corneum that extends into the nail body and then you have your nail matrix which is the continuation of na nail root it gives rise to most of your nail and then the nail bed which attaches to the nail and is distal to the nail matrix and then the lunula uh, which is the part of the nail, it is whitish, it is crescent-shaped area, and then base of the nail. So, even with your nail structures, there can be also um, health conditions that can be um, assessed no? just by looking your nail structure. Minsan kapag uh, madilaw yung nails, there can be a condition attached to it. Kapag ka walang lunula yung fingers nyo, it can also um, depict a certain health condition. Okay? So, you check on your lunula if meron yung mga, fing yung mga nails nyo. Okay? And then, you may just want to read um, articles or maybe um, websites that can tackle about um, health conditions wherein lunula is being used as a determinant. Okay? 
Next, your vitamin D production. So, UV light causes skin to produce a precursor molecule for vitamin D. The precursor is carried by the blood to the liver where it is modified. So, next to the kidneys where it is modified again to form active vitamin D. And then the vitamin D can also be ingested through fish oils, fortified milk, eggs, and butter. Vitamin D stimulates intestine to absorb calcium and phosphate for bone growth and muscle function. Okay? So, kaya tayo nagkakaroon, guys, nung sinatawag na liver disease, di ba? Or nagkakaroon ng jaundice. It's because it is carried, um, vitamin D is being, um, kumbaga, produced through our system in the liver and then to the kidneys. Okay? So, this is actually how um, the vitamin D is being produced. So, um, cholesterol is converted to 7-dihydrocholesterol, which is a precursor of vitamin D3. And then, when being exposed to UVB radiation, 7-dihydrocholesterol in the skin is converted to vitamin D3, or what you call your cholecalciferol. Okay. So, the vitamin D3 must then be hydroxylated in the liver and the kidneys to become active. At this point, it can exert its endocrine effect. Okay. So, note that vitamin D3 or col calciferol is the animal form of vitamin D and vitamin D2 or ergo calciferol is a plant form of vitamin D. So, again, um, dietary intakes, no? yung fish and meat, so D3, and then supplements or sa plants naman yung D2. And then both D2 and D3 are not biologically active, which are modified to become active in the body to have effect. And then 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 or calcitrol is the active form now of your vitamin D in the body. Okay, so it is very important talaga guys na um, nagpapaaraw din. Di ba nga sa mga babies, di ba? When babies are being born, uh, usually ang color nila is pallor or pale, no? So, for them to be able to um, process and to make sure that their livers and kidneys are properly working as well, of course, they are usually uh, being brought outside para ipaaraw, okay? So, eventually, kapag ka-okay yung production ng vitamin D, or the calcitrol in the body of the babies, nagbabago na yung color nila eventually. Okay? So, for the different types of um, vitamin Ds na hindi natin na, 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 na hindi kayang i-process um, ng body, we should have a dietary intake of it. Like from fish and meat and of course your supplements or plant-based products. Next, for the temperature regulation, so body temperature should be around 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees. The rate of chemical reaction or metabolism is altered by the changes in the room temperature. So, to cool the body, the blood vessels in the dermis dilate and heat is transferred from the deep tissues to skin and sweat is being produced. So, when you say dilate, ito yung lumalaki or um, lumuluwag yung mga blood vessels. Okay? And then, to heat the body naman, para, for example, if it's too cold, okay, the blood vessels constrict to reduce blood flow to the skin and heat is being retained. Okay? So, this is actually how the heat exchange is happening. So, the blood vessel dilation results in increased blood flow towards the surface of the skin. And then, there is increased blood flow beneath the epidermis results in the increased heat loss. Okay, so, these are the gold arrows being represented. So, blood vessels dilates or what we call the vasodilation. And then, you have here, uh, here the epidermis. Okay, so, kumbaga yung heat loss is dumidikit yung mga blood vessels dun sa skin. So, heat loss is uh, processed across the dermis, epidermis. So, next, the blood vessels constrict results in decreased blood flow towards the skin surface. So, tignan nyo, yung blood vessels, medyo away sila from the epidermis. And then, decreased blood flow beneath the epidermis results in decrease in heat loss. 
Okay. So for the clinical applications, these are the following. So aging and integument. So blood flow decreases and skin becomes thinner due to the decreased amounts of collagen in the body. Decreased activity of the sebaceous and sweat glands make temperature regulation more difficult and loss of elastic fibers cause skin to sag and wrinkle. Okay, so I think sinasabi ko na age is really a great factor when it comes to the quality of the cells or the quality of the organs of your body to um, maintain, to be maintained. Okay? So, as we age, yun nga, nagde-depreciate yung quality. Of course, nababawasan yung mga nutrients na meron tayo sa katawan. Kaya nga, when you age, diba, the more kayong nag intake ng kung ano-ano, mga collagen, um, yung mga gamot, okay? just to be able to make sure that the body is still in homeostasis or in its natural form. Okay. And then, classification of burns. Okay. The first degree, it damages only the epidermis. You will see the redness, slight swelling, and then pain. It heals within 2 to 3 days, usually no scar. And it includes sunburns or exposure to something that's too much cold. Lalo na kunyari kapag nakahawa kayo ng dry eyes. Okay. And then, next one, you have the second degree burn. So, damages the epidermis and the upper dermis. It will show redness, swelling, pain, blisters. It heals in two weeks with some scarring. Okay? So, with partial thickness, minsan nagkakaroon pa yan ng water. Okay? Yung parang nagbabubble siya or nagkakaroon ng malaking um, expansion of the skin and then there's water within it. Okay? And then, for the third degree or the full burn, it destroys the epidermis and the dermis. Burned areas are cherry red to black. The nerve endings are destroyed and skin graft might be necessary. So usually kapag ka mga third degree burn, uh, usually patient, patients no longer have the sensation. Hindi na nila alam na sunog na sunog sila. Pero makikita mo na para silang um, tinusta na bacon. Okay. Parang ganun na yung kulay yung medyo, um, medyo sunog-sunog yung quality of their skin. And then for the fourth degree, of course, there's already the deep penetration um, in the in the skin. So even the fats and the tissues are really burnt, and it actually exposes the bones already. Okay, the requirement is immediate professional treatment, and may be associated to complete limb loss or the need for complex reconstruction. Okay, so sa third degree, pwede pang mas skin graft, pwede pa siyang mapatch up, but with um deep penetration, so totally destroyed na yung mga muscles niya. Of course, you have nothing to, ano, to cover it. Kasi with skin grafting, you can just get a part of your skin, maybe from the back, maybe from your thigh, tapos ipapatch mo dun sa sugat. But with fourth degree, of course, there's already um, umbaga, exposure of the bones. Of course, hindi ka naman pwedeng kumuha ng muscle sa ibang parts of the body para dun mo siya ilagay. Okay. So, usually, nagkakaroon na to ng amputation or maybe uh, complex reconstruction. Okay. So, these are the different um, umbaga, um, effects of burns no? um, in the different systems of your body. So, just read up on this one to know more about um, how different... Um, systems of your body respond to burns. Okay? So, this is how the varying degrees of burn injuries look like. So, normal healthy skin. And then, kapag ka first degree, for second degree, again, you have the deep blistering. And then, for the third degree burn, awaw, mukha siyang um, ham, na sunog. Okay? Charred. And then, yan. Okay, so pasintabi sa mga kumakain. Okay, mukha talaga siyang ham na medyo sunog. Okay. Next, we have skin cancer. So, this is uh, the most common cancer. It is mainly caused by UV light exposure. Uh, fair skin people are more prone to skin cancer and prevented by limiting sun exposure and using sunscreens. 
So, UV rays cause tan and is associated with malignant melanomas. And then, UVB rays cause sunburns. So, screen, uh, sunscreens should block UVA and UVB rays. So, if you try to buy sunscreens in the market, usually, meron pa tayong tinatawag ng mga SPF. Okay, so just read up on the label and make sure that both UVA and UVB rays can be, um, kumbaga, can be resisted, okay, when you use them on your skin, okay? So, types of skin cancer includes the basal cell carcinoma, ito yung uh, first picture, letter A, the cells in the stratum basalis are effective and cancer is being removed by surgery, and then letter B is your squamous cell carcinoma. These cells are above the stratum basale and it can actually cause death. Okay, and then lastly, you have the malignant melanoma. It, is, uh, it arises from the melanocytes in a mole. Uh, it is actually a rare type of cancer and it can also cause death. Okay. Kaya nga minsan guys, kapag ka merong mga tao na malalaki yung moles nila, um, siguro ang pinakamagandang gawin dyan is you observe if the size of the mole is getting bigger and bigger every year or e every time and kung masakit siya, maybe it's time for you to, to go to, to, to the doctor and have it checked to make sure that it is not um, a type of malignant melanoma. Okay, meron kasi mga ganun na types of moles na nung siguro pinanganak ka maliit lang, nung bata ka maliit lang, pero as you grow or older, lumalapad siya or lumalaki. And then, of course, there's a, an association of discomfort on that part of your body which has the mole. Okay? So, this is um, just a summary of the representative diseases and disorders of the skin. So, just read up on this one. Okay? So, the other examples would be your ringworm. Okay, bakit siya tinawag na ringworm? Because it um, resembles how uh, a ring, no? Na, and then the primary um, agent is um, a type of uh, worm. Okay? So, mukha siyang patch. Tapos meron siyang parang, um, what do you call this? Yung inaasintahan no, sa gitna. And then you have eczema and dermatitis. Uh, usually, uh, kapag kami eczema and dermatitis, nagsisimula lang to sa maliit na butlig na may tubig too big. But eventually, kapag ka na-expose kasi sa mga agents na matatapang like um, dishwashing soap or laundry soap, nag, uh, ano siya, nag-flare. Okay? Uh, ano din to? Makate. And then, kapag ka medyo pagaling na siya, nag peel off. Pero pag pinipil off mo siya, nag, nagmumukhang thin yung skin. Okay? And then, usually yung mga eczema and dermatitis, hindi talaga sila pinapagamit ng mga um, matatapang na products. More on the milder side sila. So, usually uh, medicated soaps, um, unscented lotions, um, and um, mga uh, ang tag mga sabon na pang baby. Okay, usually baby products which are milder than the common ones being used in the household. Okay, so minsan din ang eczema and dermatitis may also come in season. Okay, maybe kapag ka, us, minsan, um, kapag ka hot yung weather, okay, kapag nagbabago yung weather actually, may, may mga ganong cases. Okay. Okay, next would be um, psoriasis. This is actually another type of um, skin condition wherein yung skin nagkakaroon ng red patches and then eventually magkakaroon ka ng um, thick scales, no? parang dandruff all over the body. And usually, ang mga affected na ito is yung mga behind the ears. Um, you also have your yung mga joints, okay, sa elbows, um, and then sa hands, okay. If you're familiar with Abby Marano, she's actually a, a famous volleyball player in the UAAP. So, 
even though she is um, experiencing such condition, no, ako nakikita niyo yung katawan niya, para siyang may blisters talaga and big patches of um, psoriasis patches. Uh, she she was still able to have this picture, no? It actually circulated in social media. Uh, that's the time that I actually knew about it na meron siya. Kasi guys, actually, I have this one. Uh, nga lang, mine was not that severe like Abi Maranyo. Mine was actually mild. Um, it actually developed sa akin, bata pa ako. Maybe I was in high school pa noon when it started, but um, it was only just when I finished college na talagang na-diagnose that I had it. Um, ito kasi guys, uh, wala siyang kumbaga wala siyang definite cure. I, kailangan to mahabang gamutan and mahabang patience talaga kasi sa isang gamutan pa lang um, usually papahid ka ng morning, magpahid ka ng tanghal, magpahid ka ng evening. You have different sets of soap, you have different sets of lotion, you also different ha- sets of shampoos to try para lang ma-relieve yung pagiging sore nung skin and to avoid also the scaling of the skin, okay? Um, there are times na this are um, kumbaga uh, this are masakit, okay? May times na masakit, may times na very itchy that you tend to parang would, would like to just peel them off kaya lang nangyayari is nagkakaroon ng open wound okay and then yeah nagkakaroon siya na, yung sa, lalo na sa kuko um nagkakaroon siya ng mga thick scales mga reddish patches and then yan parang nabubulok yung nails okay so yung nails mo bago magganyan katulad sa picture na nakikita nyo na parang pabulok na talaga, you will feel discomfort. Masakit talaga siya. Especially when um, kapag kala, palagian na or parang in season na din yung pag-flourish ng psoriasis. Kasi minsan ang nagiging reason din kaya nag-flare si uh, psoriasis is because of too much, uh, too much stress. Um, kapag ka laging nagpupuyat Okay, so uh, I was actually um, seeing my doctor sa RITM, okay, sa Research in- Institute for Tropical Medicine kasi meron sila dong um, parang meron silang department who only deals with skin diseases or the derma, uh, derma department of RITM. So doon, um, makita mo lahat ng klase ng skin diseases of different um, people in the society. Even mayaman, meron din palang ganun. Even yung mga talagang al- alam mong walang wala, makikita mo din sila doon. And even in different ages, I was actually able to see siguro mga 4 years old na siya na boy. Imagine the feeling of him having this disease na uh, all throughout his life meron siya nito. Na naka, medyo nakakaawa. Pero guys, dapat open-minded tayo sa mga ganito since you are in the medical field and you want you see who has um like skin diseases like this kasi ito yung ito yung pinakamahirap itago na type of diseases yung nakikita ng mata because it's in the skin. Okay, so if in, case, in any case na makakita kayo ng mga ganitong klaseng patients, of course, the first thing that you should do is not to feel pity for them or and then wag nyo silang padidirihan. Okay, so ang lagi kong sinasabi sa mga previous classes ko is that wala naman sigurong tao na ginusto na magkaroon sila ng ganitong klaseng type of disease. Okay, so yan. Etong psoriasis is actually one of the uh, kumbaga sa kamutan, medyo mahal din. Okay? The only thing that you can do with psoriasis is to prevent its inflammation um, by using different types of drugs uh, na pinapahit or different types of tissues, uh, different types of shampoos na pwede mong gamitin. Okay? 
Pero kapag ka talagang medyo ang type of the psoriasis is already the severe type, yun talaga yung medyo mahirap ng gamutin or i-prevent. Okay? Um, siguro ngayon, you, you will be able to see Abby Maranyo na wala siyang masyadong patches. Kasi I think um, even in the US, uh, if you're familiar with Kim Kardashian, I think Kim Kardashian has psoriasis as well. But the treatment she chose to have is actually like a laser type of treatment. Unlike yung iba na pinapahit. Okay. Meron siyang isang uh, they call this parang segment in Keeping Up with the Kardashians where in her dermatologist went to their house and then nilaser lang yung part kung saan siya kumbaga tinutubuan nung mga psoriasis or yung mga flakes and patches. Okay? So usually yung mga psoriasis nagkuumpi siya sa, sa parang maliliit na blisters ganyan and then makate na pag nakamot mo, eh, nagsusugat talaga siya. And then, thick talaga yung scales mo. Kahit na mag-shampoo kasi siguro sa damakmak na anti-dandruff shampoo. Since it's genetic, okay, it already runs in the, uh, kumbaga, confirmation of, or the codes, or the gene expressions of your cells na kailangan natin mag-produce, mag-produce ng thick type of cell because of the psoriasis. Okay, so, yun. It's something that, um, wala pa talagang definite cure na nahanap since it's gen- genetics and um, para matigil yung gantong klaseng genetical um, condition, kailangan, syempre, yung paggagawa ng gamot is also in a cytological point of view. So, dun mismo sa cell or dun mismo sa gen- genes yung ta- dapat na i-alter. Okay? So, next you have the impetigo or uh, the cubitus ulcers. So, you have the non-bolus impetigo and then the bolus impetigo. Usually, nakukuha to guys sa mga ano. Uh, you, what, impetigo is actually parang bed sore. Okay, nakukuha yung mga bed sores na ganyan sa tulad ng sa mga matatanda na hindi naman nakakagalaw, na nasa bed lang all the time. Kaya nga, sabi nila kapag uh, you have a patient who can no longer parang move around, lalo na yung mga nasa coma, what you have to do is to parang to flip them once in a while to prevent these types of ulcers. Okay? Next, you have your rubiola and rubella. So, micelles is the rubiola. It is a viral infection of the respiratory system. Measles is a very contagious disease that can spread through contact with infected mucus and saliva. And then you have rubella. It is a contagious disease that mostly affects children. It causes symptoms like rush, fever, uh, and eye redness. It is usually mild in kids, but in but it can be more serious in pregnant women. So, ito din, di ba kapag uh, in, in, in our younger years, meron tayong mga... Um, vaccine, okay, na ini-introduce sa katawan natin to prevent these types of infection like the mis- for the measles. And then kailangan din um i-prevent to especially with pregnant women to prevent also um uh, miscarriage o kaya death, okay, of the mother and the baby. And then chicken pox or shingles. Okay? bulutong tubig. Sabi nila, kapag kakain ka daw ng mas malansa, like um, eggs, no? mas lalabas daw yung chicken pox. And then, of course, etong shingles, mukha siyang chicken pox, but shingles naman, um, mas masakit yung pakiramdam of having shingles. And then, mas matagal siyang gumaling. Okay? And then, you have cold sores, or yung parang mamaso. It also parang reflects also with the change of weather, and of course, your uh, reflects also the level of your immune system. Okay, so you have your stage 1, stage 2, 3, 4, and then, of course, the final stage is 5, is the healing stage. So, masakit din to, no? Usually, yung mga cold sores natin uh, around our lips or our, our mouth. Okay? And then, next is your genital herpes. 
So, genital herpes simplex in males, and then this is the bottom parts are the genital herpes simplex in females. So, these are um, products of the herpes species, no? mga bacterial infection na nakukuha. Okay, and then what's being affected are actually the genitals. So, usually itong mga herpeses na to na kukuha din sila kapag uh, uh, i, uh, sa intercourse. Okay, so for example, you're not aware that your partner does have a, um, is actually affected by a bacterial or viral infection. Of course, if you get to have intercourse with them, mahawa ka. Okay, so ganyan yung mga nangyayari kapag ka napapabayaan yung herpes. Okay? So, what really, what's really important when it comes to yung mga sexual intercourse na ganyan is that, of course, you make sure that um, your genitals are clean and then you make sure also to check your partner kung okay lang ba sila if, if they do have um, situations like this, of course, di ba? Kasi, uh, since the genitals are um, releasing secretions, mas matagal silang gumagaling. Okay? And they are really, ano, infectious. Okay? And syempre, it's the genital, it will cost you so much um, discomfort as well. Okay? So, ito, isa to sa mga pinakamalalang um, types of um, Uh, types of diseases of the skin. Okay? Your genital herpes. Okay? So, this is actually the end of my presentation and thank you very much. I'll see you um, on our conference by next week.